All right, so we got the outside of the Jeep all cleaned up now. Um, still have some more work to do. Have a lot of cleaning to do on the interior, but uh, we're actually gonna work on a project here next before we do that, because it's actually gonna create more dirt and debris inside uh, the vehicle. Uh, and that is, we are getting ready to install this. <clears throat> this is the Rhino Rack backbone. So we're actually gonna have to install the, all these brackets and these brackets here will actually bolt onto the hard top, through the hard top into those brackets surrounding the rear window. So there's gonna be some fiberglass dust and everything going to the inside, some on the outside, but we can blow that off, um, but definitely on the inside. Uh, so no sense of cleaning it now. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started on doing this and that will allow us to then also install our Rhino Rack roof rack. So uh, let's get started on this. So we got all of our parts laid out on this handy little uh, cardboard that they sent with it. Uh, we did not read the instructions beforehand, which was a mistake. So if you do this, look at the instructions first. It's actually set up that you can actually pull this cardboard piece out and everything should basically be in place where you need it. Um, supposedly, I didn't do it, so I can't tell you for sure, but that's what the instructions say. So um, we kind of went through the process and laid everything out on it. And definitely nice to not only confirm you have all the parts, but know each part that you need as you go through the instructions. So. We'll get started on installing this and uh, see how it goes. All right, so now that we've got everything laid out and ready to go, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove the bolts that hold the hard top onto the body. So all along here, these uh, Torx bits, it is a T50 Torx. So we'll go ahead and get started on removing all those. All right, so now we've got the bolts removed on the hard top. We've got to put our brackets in place. So this is the rear bracket, front bracket up there. And uh, so we'll go ahead and get these put in. And these just bolt in to the spot where the hard top bolts down. So this install is gonna be a little bit more difficult for me than it would be for most people because I have uh, some American Adventure Live accessories in here. Um, such as this uh, control panel with my air filters for the air compressor, the air chuck, uh, some power management stuff, my inverter. All that stuff bolts to the same place that we're bolting these on. So now I got to stack brackets on brackets uh, and the stuff, especially on the driver's side with all the electrics, electronics and everything, um, do not have a whole lot of room to, to move. So it's going to take a little bit of fiddling, um, but We'll, we'll get it. Uh, definitely won't be as bad for somebody that doesn't have this. Um, but if you're looking at doing some of this stuff, great time to do it because you already got everything apart. All right, so we got the two brackets in. This side was definitely pretty fiddly with all of the other accessories. Definitely starting to notice a theme working on these Jeeps. The more I add, the more the things I've already added are causing a problem. But it is what it is, right? So. Uh, see what the next step is. So now for the part I'm nervous about. So I'm making somebody else do it. Woo. It ain't mine. <laughs> I guess it's always easier if it's not yours, right? So yeah, gotta poke the holes through. Get that cleaned up, but the part that makes me nervous. Now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that most of the time I do all the work on these things by myself. It's very rare that I have help. So right now it's kind of nice. Now we got to vacuum it out. So vacuum assistant. It sucks. <laughs> all right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually install the rear brackets. So it'll line up with our holes and go on here. But before we actually bolt this on, we need to put a sealant around here. Now the instructions say to use uh, butyl, but I could not find uh, any butyl. Um, so I'm gonna use the gasket maker and just seal it up and uh, hope it works. So 
There's one bracket done. Yep. All right, so now that we have the rear brackets on, uh, we need to install the middle bracket. So the way we gotta do that is it just kind of sets in place to start. And we've got this long bracket that will go across them and bolt into each of them and that will set where that one goes. And then we need to make sure we space the middle bracket up properly. So we'll get started on getting the, uh, the upper bracket bolted on first and then we can space that up and I'll show you that. Okay, so we got that uh, bolted on. So now we're gonna take this tool that it comes with and it's got two sides that are marked. You got six and a half and you got 11. So we wanna use the six and a half to space it under the gutter and it will sit just like that. And that makes sure that the bracket does not sit too low. So now we can drill out these holes, which we have to do from the outside this time, because there's too much stuff in the way on the inside to be able to do it. So we'll get started on drilling these out and uh, get this all taken care of. All right, so we got everything in place. Now we're gonna take our little uh, spacer here and take the flare to end and put it into there quarter inch drill bit and we're going to drill it out. Five sixteenths drilling through the bigger, bigger holes that we already ran the pilot holes in. And then we're going to put the bolts, nuts and washers in. All right. Five sixteenths to drill it out. And if you're ever drill, drilling through fiberglass and bit's got a little too much bite, you can run it in backwards, the bit in reverse. That's a good tip. So now we just need to pull it up, silicone it, and get it bolted into place, right? Yes, sir. All right, so we'll do that next. We'll get this cleaned up, get it siliconed, and make it happen. All right, so we got one more bracket to install uh, towards the front here. So to do that, we removed this bracket that was spanning the uh, rear in the middle and we're going to change that over to span the middle and the front so you flip it over and use this hole instead and this hole we should probably double check that here no i think that's wrong i think it was these two holes we need to double check that okay <laughs> And scratch Please that hold. One. Yeah. So we change it up so that we use this hole here, and these two larger holes will line up with the holes that we're going to drill. So we'll bolt it in with this hole here. So we've got the bracket getting our spacing. Use our special tool again on the 11 side to get our height on that. And then we need one of these that will go. Now we'll go down in the hole and we'll use that as our guide to drill. All right, so now we can pull this back apart. So now we're going to go back through with our half inch drill bit and we put a stop on it so we don't go too far and into the roll bar. Now we got the holes drilled. Uh, we did take the freedom panels off of the front so that we can remove the front bolt and just get a little bit of movement out of it. To, there's a bracket that we got to put inside. So I'm going to remove this front bolt on the hard top. All right, so now this bracket needs to go in between the, the roll hoop and those holes that we drilled. And it is uh, it already has a nut in it, so it's already threaded. bracket has an indention on it that sits down inside the roll bar so it sits exactly into place. All right, so now we got that bracket in place, we can finish up on the top side. All right, here we go. All right, so we got those two tight. And bracket underneath needs to be tightened up now. Yep. Just 
can get the hard top put back so I don't forget that. I'll just tighten up this last bolt up underneath here. All right, so the final part of doing the backbone system is this bracket, which is what we use to actually space all of the uh, outer brackets in the right spot is actually, it actually doubles as the upper rail in here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. All right, so that's it for the actual Rhino Rack backbone system. Uh, now we can actually get started on building the roof rack itself and getting it attached to the backbone setup, um, which is gonna be really nice. So we'll get started on that next. All right, so now that we have the backbone set up on the Jeep, it's time to build the roof rack. So we've got everything laid out here. That uh, is a lot of extruded aluminum parts. So we're gonna get going on this. Uh, we'll probably just do a time lapse on this and uh, see what we get. All right, so after a little bit of time, we got the rack built. It's upside down as you see it right now because we are getting ready to flip it over and put it on the Jeep. So this is the Rhino Rack Pioneer alloy tray. And it's a bit of a bugger to put together, but we got it. So now this needs to go there. This should be interesting. Hold it right there. So it took a little bit of work, but the Rhino Rack backbone roof rack is finally done. So here we go. So I'm really excited to have that done. It was a lot of work and I'm tired, but I'm super excited to have that done and uh, get ready to start putting some of the uh, other accessories on. Definitely a big step in transforming this Jeep into the second chance Overland Wrangler. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, Want to give a special shout out and thanks to my friends, Keith and Val. Couldn't have done this without you and looking forward to getting out on the trails with you guys. We'll see you next time on Second Chance Overland.